Welcome back to Virtual Reality. My name is Thomas and you are watching Budo the EVR. Finally, I got a lot of time to test the Extal 8K. So now you will get a full review. I tell you every detail about display, comfort, god ray, price, where you get it and all the stuff. The video is a little bit longer, so take your time because it needs to be analyzed, of course. So let's see what this very expensive headset can do and for who it is um, meant and yeah, we will see that now. You can find everything about VR and AR on this channel. Thanks to my sponsors, Woodghost VR, Offermann Events, Peter Wasmer, Andy de Felser, VR Ambassador and Virtual Escape. Let's have some fun with the video and let's go. So uh, let's check out the design first. I know this is not really important, but uh, it's something that I still want to talk about. So yeah, as you can see, this is a total monster. It's so ultra huge. And to be honest, you look I, like an idiot when you wear it. <laughs> I must be really honest here. It's just too big on your head. Uh, don't let anybody watch you uh, while you're uh, playing that. <laughs> they will laugh. However, guys, um, the design, um, phew, I'm not a big fan of this design, to be honest. I mean, it, it, it's not really important, but this, uh, uh, this cage here, the, the tracking cage for Steam VR, the, it looks just cheap. Like somebody printed it from a, from a 3D printer and um, just put it uh, there. It really looks uh, cheap. How, look at this here. It, it, it just looks cheap, but... Uh, However, uh, when you see the design here with the diamond case without a, a cage, it, it uh, looks pretty interesting. But for me, this is, this is not what I really love, what my eyes don't want to see. Um, also the design here with the, with the colors here, it's not really my thing here from the design. But um, it, as I said, it's not really important. You, what I really love with the design, you can remove the complete head strap with the two buttons here. What, what I will show it to you later in the separate um, part of the video. So yeah, what do you think? I, I already saw people that love the design of the XTAL. Uh, for me, <laughs> I must be really honest here, I, I don't like the design of this headset. What do you think? Write it in the comments below. Let's talk about comfort, weight and cable length. So let's start at the end. The cable is 4.9 meters long and this is nothing that, uh, really, uh, that's really impressive. Uh, I think most of the headsets have 5 meters and I expected that this one has a little bit longer cable, mm, perhaps like seven meters or whatever. However, it's not so important because mostly uh, you use this headset seated for racing simulators or flight simulators. So it's, it's not so important. However, the weight, guys, the weight, please sit down. You will be shocked. <laughs> the weight of this headset is over 1.3 kilo. Holy shit. <laughs> so I have no idea what's what was wrong with the design here, but of course this is much too heavy. It's even more than double than the, the, the heaviest headset that I know. I, I have no idea how, how they uh, could do that. Over 1.3 kilo, holy shit. <laughs> I mean, you, you instantly see that when you, when you check it out, but how can they even do that? So you can wear it like this and uh, put it on your eyes here, then down, then the wheel and here you have the, the strap that you can attach here and yeah it sits on my head of course but <laughs> it's so ultra front heavy. I mean it, it, it really hurts my neck after even uh, some minutes. So whew, it's, it's hard, it's, it's really hard to, to say this is comfortable because it's just not comfortable. <laughs> So, how the heck, <laughs> it, it, I mean it sits on my head very good, but it's just too heavy, it's just too heavy. You, you can uh, do a, a perfect head strap here. I think this is, it, this is a good head strap, but the front unit, it's just too heavy. It's just too heavy. It's not comfortable. I mean you can remove 
this part here, you can remove the whole head strap and then you can attach it to a real helmet, to a flight pilot helmet. I already wear that uh, um, some, I, I think one year ago in Prague um, with a real helmet and uh, even that, it was not so comfortable because it's just too heavy. It's just the, the front weight here. So I'm really sorry, but I cannot say this is comfortable. <laughs> Everybody who tells me this is comfortable, this is for sure a lie. <laughs> Okay, then let's check out the setup first. So uh, with your Xtal, there comes a small paper that says uh, go to uh, the VR Genius um, developer portal and then uh, download the VR tool. Um, there you will find this one. Yeah? The, this is the newest version for now. It's called 2.0.3.227 here. And it says, welcome, I'm your new Xtal headset. And there it asks, um, how it is connected. Mine is connected with the virtual link, so we will click here. And here it already says, um, all is well, your graphic card supports VR applications. So I had to borrow a 2080 Ti from the VR Genius because my new RTX 3090 doesn't have virtual link anymore. And there is no adapter at the moment. Um, available. There, there is an adapter, but uh, they can't send me one because they are low on adapters. <laughs> so I will just try it with a 2080 Ti. This one says GTX 1070, but this is a lie. <laughs> I definitely have a 2080 Ti. Go on next. And I already connected the Xtal 8K via virtual link to the USB-C socket of the graphic card. So it says virtual link successfully connected here. Then we go on next. Um, here it says your graphics driver has not been verified yet. So the VR Genius, the company that makes the Xtal, um, will um, verify every single NVIDIA driver. And if you have a newer version than the last verified one, then there is an error message here. So if you have any problems with your newer NVIDIA drivers, then you could install the, um, the latest verified version here. Okay, um, the next one is you can test your headphones and the microphone and uh, switch the volume here as you like. I think I will do it on 25, whatever, and the microphone and then go on next. And here we have to install the leap motion drivers for the hand tracking. So if you click here, then uh, it will lead you to a web page where you can download that. And this is what I'm gonna do now. Okay, and when you install the driver, he will all already say installation successful. And then you go on next. And here you can choose the tracking system. As you can see, there are a lot of tracking system available. I will use a lighthouse system. Uh, so go on Steam VR here. What does he say? No, it doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> You, you have to wait a little bit. So um, Steam VR already installed. Um, if you haven't already installed Steam, then you can do that here on next. Um, he says how, how that will look. And here, if your OpenVR driver are not installed or old, then you can update the OpenVR driver here and then go on next. And that's it, you can go on finish and here you are. You are now ready to go. That's it, that's it for the setup wizard. It's pretty easy, everybody can do that. And for now, that's, that's really cool. What do you think? Okay, let's talk about the most important part, the display. So <clears throat> in the software, you can um, choose between different Hertz and resolution. So the, the main, the highest resolution of this headset is called 8K. It's not 8K, it's two times 4K. It's the same name like with the Pimax 8K. And as you can see, we have two times 3840 by 2160. Um, and this is a really high resolution. <laughs> and what you can see, it's only, this is a fast switch LC display, but it only supports 75 Hertz in this resolution. And this is very important for people that have a problem with that. For me, um, I must be honest, I don't have any problems with 75 Hertz. I, of course, if there's a very bright scene, it could be a little bit flickering, but 
I, I don't even care about that. It's, I, forgot, I forget it after one second. It's not a problem for me. But I know there are people that have a problem with that. So I have to mention that on the full resolution, you can only choose 75 Hertz. Um, you, but you can also choose the 5K resolution. This is two times 2,563 by 1,440. And there you can choose up to 120 Hertz. So uh, perhaps you've seen the through the lens videos and uh, these are some screenshot of that. Uh, it looks just fantastic. It, it's crazy. <laughs> Look at this. This is digital combat <clears throat> simulator. You can even see the buttons. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Half-Life Alyx. Um, <clears throat> this is a test tool. Uh, it's a little bit dark because I filmed that through the camera, but uh, the colors are really good. Even though it's not an OLED display, it's LCD, but uh, you can see the different color um, stages here. It's, it's absolutely no problem. It has really good colors and this is awesome. So uh, this is the, the smallest uh, font here and you can read it perfect. It's so clear. It's amazing <laughs> it's really amazing the display is crazy awesome <laughs> and here you can also see the the writings here it's it's so clear and you you can guess a little bit of the sweet spot here the, on the edge it it gets a little bit blurry but it could be because of the camera uh, through the lens filming when i wear it there is absolutely no blurry at the edges it's absolutely clear everywhere and uh, I, I love that. It's, it's really, really good. But I will talk about that later, about Sweet Spot. Um, this is a um, um, screen door effect test. Um, this is not zoomed, not yet. And you can see uh, it's pl pretty clear here on, on this um, red lines. But let's zoom that. So this is the full zoom with my camera, maximum zoom. And this is crazy amazing, really. You, Look at this. Uh, I mean, this picture, you will not ever see that with your real eyes. It's zoomed with a, with a camera. You can only guess the screen door effect here. It's, you will not see the screen door effect in any game anywhere with this headset. And that's with, with such a huge feed of view. We will talk about that later. It's really good. This is the best display I've seen in a, in a VR headset. When we talk about the controllers, um, I must say that, of course, the headset is made for uh, seated experiences like uh, racing simulations or flight simulators. So we, you normally will not need the VR controllers, but you will need uh, like HOTA system, flight sticks or uh, steering wheels or whatever. Um, however, it is still possible to connect normal VR controllers because the XTAL um, supports a lot of tracking systems. For example, the Steam VR Lighthouse system. If you have that, you can use any of the Lighthouse controllers like the old Vive ones here that you can uh, see here or the Index controllers that you can see here. They are um, really new. They have uh, hand and finger tracking um, and you can just connect them when you uh, go to Steam VR and say, um, um, add a new controller and then you uh, have to insert the two uh, wireless dongles that come with the XTAL. Just insert them to a USB and then you will be able to connect the Lighthouse controllers here. That's really good. It just works. And um, of course the XTAL supports uh, other tracking systems as well like, like ArtTrack or OptiTrack. And if you have these tracking systems in your arcade or whatever, uh, then you can also use all the compatible controllers for the other um, tracking systems as well. So you can see the XTAL supports a lot of tracking system and a lot of controllers. So um, this is a good thing when you have a, a special um, stuff to, to show to the people in an arcade or whatever or in a business design if you want to show a car or whatever <laughs> then you can do that with all the tracking systems and the controllers. And that's a really uh, good thing here. Okay, let's talk about the field of view of this headset. And uh, they promise to have a clear view that we already saw and also a huge field of view. And I com can confirm that uh, uh, mostly to 100%. 
However, the vertical field of view, the vertical field of view is not so big. Yeah, it's 95% and uh, this is standard. Uh, even the HP Reverb G2 has a vertical field of view of 94%, but the horizontal view is really huge with the XL 8K. We have 140 here and with the Reverb G2, 78. So this is nearly double and that's really awesome. It's really awesome. Uh, you can see that here in, the, in this view. Um, so the, the Acer Ojo 500, this is what I normally take for, for the standard headset that have 110 uh, diagonal field of view. You can compare that to the um, Reverb G2. So you can see what you what you will see from the picture. You will not see the, the mirrors on the on the edges. You don't see them. And with the um, XTOL 8K here, you see that here, you can see both mirrors. You can see both mirrors here and here. The Pimax even has a bigger field of view. Um, this is even only normal. The um, wide field of view you can guess it's, it's the whole screen here. Um, it's even bigger but then you have the distortion on the edges with the Pimax. With the uh, XTAL 8K you have no distortion at the edges and that's crazy. Um, I, I will show a picture to you soon. Um, this is a glare test. So God rays and stuff and as you can see there are no glares. It's just clear. The lenses are clear. <clears throat> there are no Fresnel lenses. They are totally clear and we don't have any uh, glare or God rays. It's just clear and you can also see the, the black levels here again. It's really good for an LC display. You have this picture again. Uh, there is a little bit blurriness here but uh, you will not see that in, in the display. Definitely not. And this here, I, this is Project Cars 2. I tried to, to film really the edges of the screen. Uh, you can see the, the edge here. Um, the blurriness here you will not see because your eye don't, eyes don't see so far. Um, but this is the outer edge of your view. And look how clear that is. There is no distortion. It's just a clear mirror, rear mirror view. And that's awesome. <laughs> this is really awesome. I've never seen uh, such good lenses and such a good display on a VR headset. Let's talk about the compatibility to games. So I tried a lot of stuff like Digital Combat Simulator, Half-Life Alyx, uh, Beat Saber, whatever, Digital Combat Simulator, everything. And uh, there is no problem. You can play all the games. Um, perhaps there are some games that don't work, but I didn't find them. Um, you can play them with every game with the largest field of view, not like the Stavi R1, for example, that uh, have to be um, updated from the developer. You can just play all the games with the XTAL 8K and uh, that's, that's a really, really good thing. So let's talk about the tracking and this is a problem with this headset. I mean, not the tracking from the headset, but when you connect controllers, you will see that here. Check out this video. And uh, I will pick up um, some stuff here now, a weapon, and look at the tracking. Do you see that? It's, it glitches away. Look at this. Zack. <laughs> it's, and I, I didn't know wh what did I do wrong or what, what was the problem with it. You see that? It's gone. There it is again. So the tracking of the controllers was so bad. Look at this. And they told me why. Look at this. Um, so. The problem here is you get two dongles to connect the controllers and normally you will put them into the PC and it depends on where your PC is, how far it is from the headset. Mine is pretty far away so I didn't uh, notice that that is the problem. So I asked the VR genius why is the tracking so bad and they told me just uh, put a cable here into your game, into your play area and put the dongles here. So I did that and the tracking is much better, but still not perfect. You, you get some um, problems still, but uh, it's better when you place that here in your play area, perhaps from the, from the uh, ceiling or whatever, or on the ground. 
uh, but it's a problem I, and I don't like that. However, guys, you know, this headset is um, meant for helicopter pilots, racing simulators and uh, jet fighter pilots and they will not really care about uh, how the controllers work because they, they don't need them. Yeah, so, but the tracking for the headset itself is really perfect. There's absolutely no problem with the SteamVR tracking cage. It's good. Uh, but however, the tracking from the controllers is really not perfect. They, they will uh, try to implement the dongles into the headset, like you know that from Valve Index, it's just inside the headset and then you, uh, you will not have problems anymore. But this will not be in the current version of the X-Tar. Let's talk about the performance and as you perhaps uh, imagine that, um, I mean, it's, it's two times 4K and of course you cannot do anything with a GTX 1060 or whatever, it, it's, it's not possible. So I have a um, 9900K CPU and a 2080 Ti. Uh, you know I have a 3090 but it's not possible because I don't have the virtual link adapter. The 3090 doesn't have virtual link, link anymore so the VR genius sent me a 2080 Ti um, and uh, so I could try it with that. So I tried Project Cars 2 uh, and a lot of games and they were all smooth. Yeah, uh, Project Cars 2 on, on high settings, uh, on ultra settings, you, you see a little bit stuttering. Um, it's still playable, but I would recommend to play it in, on medium settings and then it's awesome. It's, it's absolutely smooth. The same with um, here, Digital Combat Simulator. Don't look at the 37 frames. It's just because of the reprojection. It's just the, ha uh, the program shows half of the uh, frames per second, um, but it's uh, I switch to the VR settings. In the performance of Digital Combat Simulator, there are different buttons and uh, there is medium or high and there is also a VR settings, recommended VR settings. I used these settings and there was absolutely no problem to play this game. It was very smooth on the 2080 Ti. So, um, however, I would not recommend to have a a less powerful PC. Uh, perhaps it will work with the 2070 Super or whatever, but I still recommend to have a powerful PC for this powerful headset. That, that makes sense, right? So yeah, perhaps you will uh, choose um, uh, a PC like, like mine for the uh, XTAL 8K. Let's talk about the heat of this headset. So will it get very warm when you use it? Uh, no, I don't uh, um, see that. So if I wear that and uh, a longer time, or if I even touch that, it's not really warmer than other headsets. It's even colder, I would say, than other headsets. But uh, when you hear it, there is a cooler inside that spins all the time. You hear that and this cools, of course, the headset, but it makes it even heavier. <laughs> but yeah, it has the advantage that it will not get very hot inside and, and on the front. And yeah, this is uh, not something negative about the headset. Let's talk about what you can remove. Uh, on the headset. So of course you can remove the tracking cage here. This is a little bit tricky. You just pull it here and uh, it's uh, glued here. You can remove it. It's a little bit tricky, but you can of course change it to another tracking system here. But I will not do it now. It's a little bit tricky. You can remove it and then you can also remove the, um, the whole head strap. I will show it to you. Just use these two buttons here and then pull it down and then you have it here and then just remove the two velcro straps here first one and the second one and here are the two pieces um, I will put it here and yeah that's what you can do I also remove the the uh, you can also remove the face cover here that's easy um, then you can remove the the cables here for the tracking system, but you cannot remove the cable of the headset itself. So when it breaks, this will be a huge problem. Um, it's not so easy to, to uh, um, put another one inside. So that's what you can remove. And on the head strap itself, you can also remove all the parts here, this part and this part. Everything is removable here and replaceable. That's a good thing. 
and yeah I think that's everything I can show you what's <laughs> removable on the Xtal. Let's talk about the IPD and as you perhaps know the XL 8K has auto IPD and that's crazy. So if you start a CBR and then it scans your eyes with the eye trackers, you can see them here and here. They scan your eyes and then it will have a motor included that sets the IPD automatically. I will start a video here and you will see that. Look at this lens here. Zzzz. Crazy, right? And the other one, it's, it's awesome. It's just awesome. And it works. It works really good. It recognized my IPD of 95.5 and that was absolutely perfect view. It works so great, the uh, um, eye tracker. And um, I think there's a really, I cannot see the values there, but it's a really huge range. So I'm pretty sure that people with 56 millimeter field of view and 74 millimeter field of view will still be able to play with the XL 8K. It will recognize your eyes and put that in the right direction. Um, on the on the edge of the headset, there are these little wheels I already showed you, and there you can put uh, set the focus. So perhaps with people wearing glasses, um, they don't need glasses. I'm not sure. I'm I, I can't test that because I don't wear uh, glasses. But uh, with the focus wheels, it could be possible that you don't need uh, um, glasses. But perhaps you can answer that to me if you wear glasses. I don't know. However, the field of view is awesome. You can put a hotkey on your keyboard and you can uh, measure the auto IPD uh, at any time, even during the game. And that works really perfect. Okay, guys, so let's do a glasses test. I have uh, old glasses here. Look at this. They are not so big. And when I try that on the headset here, then I must say it's not really comfortable. It pushes. Um, on my nose. It pushes here on my nose and that hurts a little bit and I don't like it. And the, the glasses not really, are not really big. And when I, when I use uh, bigger glasses like, like these here, oh sorry, like these here, uh, then they are really big and when I try them, then it's even worse. It's even worse. Uh, it, it hurts uh, really much here on, on that side of, of my nose and um, this could be a problem yeah, when you want to use your, your glasses. But there is something I, I'm not able to test because I don't wear glasses. I don't need glasses. There are two wheels here for focus here and here. And that can um, adjust the distance between the lenses and the display, the focus. That's awesome. Some headsets have the um, ability to um, adjust the distance between the lenses and the eyes so that uh, glasses fit uh, under the headset. But this one has a uh, focus ability. So the distance between lenses and display and that's very interesting. However, I'm not able to test if you perhaps don't need your glasses under the display because you can uh, sharp uh, make it uh, uh, focus here. You can switch uh, the focus uh, so that uh, it, you don't need a glasses. I don't know. I cannot tell that to you because I don't have it. It could be the case but however I, what I can tell you is that glasses are not so comfortable under the XTAL 8K. Let's talk about the connectors that the XTAL has. So the, the first one is um, the cable here. You cannot remove it, the headset cable, but here there's the audio jack and uh, you can use your own headphones because the XTAL doesn't have integrated sound, you will have you to use your own headphones, but it has an integrated sound card that will make uh, the sound uh, better. Then here is a USB port, there. You will use that mostly for the tracking system, so connect it and it will be here um, to the micro USB for the um, tracking cage for SteamVR. And that's it. There is no other connector here. Uh, here's the microphone and here are the cameras, but there's nothing more that you can connect. It has Bluetooth, so you can connect stuff there, but uh, nothing else is uh, inside the headset that you can connect. Let's talk about the sound. 
<laughs> there is no sound. <laughs> no, just kidding. There is, of course, no integrated headphone. Um, but you have the audio jack here. And they um, say they have an integrated sound card. Um, so I tried uh, with the audio jack with my headphone. But to be honest, uh, there, there was no big that was no big deal for me. The, I'm not a sound profi, I'm honest here, but uh, I didn't see any special stuff. I mean, the sound was good, the, absolutely no problem, but I didn't see any special uh, effect or whatever. Uh, it's just normal good sound. But the integrated microphone, uh, this is really good. Let's hear a short sample. Welcome back to virtual reality. This is a microphone test of the Extal 8K. So let's scream a little bit if that sounds good and um, let's do some pop, 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 pop sounds. Yeah, as you, as you can hear, that sounds really good. You can never compare it with the bad microphones of the HTC devices. It's really good. And if you have any multiplayer session or what, working together with other people, then this is, they, they will understand you very, very clear. So the microphone is really good. If you want to clean the headset, I can tell you this is a lot of work because there are everywhere a lot of small gaps where the, uh, uh, the dirt can, uh, can uh, hide. <laughs> so even here with the, with the rubber um, for, for the nose, there, I didn't even use it for a too long time now, but there's already dirt here and you have to be very, very careful because you could uh, disassemble it. Uh, accidentally. Even here there's a small gap with a lot of dirt and also here is a lot of place where you cannot reach it to clean it and also of course the whole tracking cage. There is a lot of space where the dirt can hide and where you cannot really reach it and that this is uh, not a really uh, good thing. So if you want to clean it you have a lot of work. What happens when you don't have uh, tracking base stations or if you don't want to have the tracking stations from the lighthouse, this one here. Does the XL still work? Yes, because it has an integrated gyro sensor and then it has three degrees of freedom. That means the headset doesn't know if it is here or here, but it at least knows where uh, the where it uh, is on the place where you, when you change the direction of your head. So this will work for uh, racing simulations and flight simulators. Um, but if you want to have room scale, uh, then of course you will need tracking system like the lighthouse base stations and stuff. Uh, but in the software you can deactivate that and just use the gyro sensor for three degrees of freedom tracking. Let's check out the hand tracking and that is really impressive. Look at this here. It works very direct and very fast here with my fingers. It, it, there's absolutely no delay and it even works on the edges here. Only when I put it here out of my view then it doesn't work anymore. But here and here and here on the top, on the bottom, it really works and it recognizes my fingers as well here. That's really cool. Even my, my fingers here, my single fingers, it can totally recognize very fast and very exact with no delay. That's impressive. So let's talk about the eye tracking. It's not only for the auto IPD, it's also for uh, foveated rendering, dynamic foveated rendering. So that means um, the headset scans where you look at, it scans your eyes and only make, makes the picture sharp exactly where you look. Everything else is not rendered in full quality and that saves a lot of performance. But unfortunately, that doesn't just work with any game. Um, the developers have to use the API of the Argenius to implement the support for, for that. And of course, there are not many games. I think only two uh, softwares or what that support that for the moment. And that's um, yeah, it's not much, but they are in um, contact with the developers, for example, for uh, Project Cars. Um, so they can implement that there. They will also uh, try to develop full stacks uh, support for Steam VR. Um, but it's not ready, it will take a longer time. 
However, I'm pretty sure that the eye tracking will work very good because it recognizes the IPD very, very exact. So I'm pretty sure that it's much better than with the Pimax eye track modules that didn't re really work. You saw my test perhaps, but uh, yeah, for the eye tracking, I think it's a good idea. Um, I will um, do a test as soon as there is uh, some <clears throat> games available when I still have the headset then. <laughs> okay guys and now the conclusion. What do I think and what is the price? You can already see that. <laughs> it, it's not fake, it's really true. It's 8,000 US dollars. 8,000 and this is even not even the full package. If you get, uh, want a virtual link uh, adapter and the enterprise license, you are at $9,210. Holy, <laughs> holy moly. <laughs> so of course this, the, the price is absolutely crazy. You cannot compare it to anything else like the G2 uh, or the uh, Quest 2. Uh, it's just impossible. And um, however, guys, they don't want to compete with Pimax or Oculus or whatever. They don't care about that. They, the people that they want are helicopter pilots and jet fighter pilots and racing pilots. This is the group that they are aiming for, not people that want to play Half-Life Alyx or, or Beat Saber or what. They don't care about that. It's possible, but they don't care. So for the military or for companies, for jet fighters, the price is, they, they don't care about that because the company buys that. Uh, so I think the, the price is not relevant so much for, for that. Um, that's why they made it uh, so expensive. However, guys, for us people at home, if you have a lot of money, <laughs> if, if you have unlimited money, if you don't care about money, if you are just rich, then it could be something for you when you want the clearest display and together with the widest field of view. Pimax doesn't have such a clear view at the edges and not even the display. The, the Reverb G2 has a clear display, but it has a very small field of view. But this one here has, a, has everything. Uh, it's perfect lenses, no distortion, really huge field of view, very clear and uh, ultra sharp display. So that's my opinion. If you have the money, just <laughs> if, if you want that, just buy it. However, Please note that this headset is not comfortable. It's ultra heavy. I already showed that to you. It's very, very heavy. You need a strong neck. <laughs> and uh, these are the two disadvantages, the price and the comfort of this headset. Yeah, so I, I told it to you if, if you just uh, want to buy it. There is one thing I can uh, do for you. There is a discount code. <laughs> I have a discount code for you. You find it in the description below. You get 10% uh, off and I also get uh, a little um, bonus for that. So if you use the code, uh, you can find it in the description below. It's C7D um, minus Voodoo.de minus U6H. So if you use that, you get 10% off of the XTAL 8K and the 5K model. So that's uh, what, what I can do for you. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody will buy that, but if you buy that guys, please, please um, write it in the comments below that you bought it via my code and also send me an email to voodoo.emc at gmail.com. You find it in the, uh, um, in the description below at the uh, very bottom and uh, please write me an email and or write a comment so that I know that you used my coupon code. That would be awesome. 10% off. <laughs> it, even with the 10% off, it's just crazy. <laughs> However, I told you what uh, the advantage and disadvantage is of the headset. If you are interested, buy it. If not, don't do that. If you want to support me that I can do uh, such tests for you, 
we are one buck per month from Patreon or YouTube uh, membership, then um, you can do that. You can find it in the description and the first uh, pinned comment. You get behind the scenes videos. But if you want to support me for free, then you can do that via my Amazon link. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and see you next time in virtual reality. See ya. Voodoo